Parallel Lives. I'm Dimmer, and this is my co-host, Q. Hello, hello. Today, we're talking about the Maladaptive Daydreaming Scale, the MDS-16, with Mm -hmm. guest Hillary, the cat mom. Hey, guys. Hello, Hello, Hillary. (laughs) It's nice to see you. My name's Hillary. I have a cat. You have a cat? I have a. I have one cat. That's not enough cats. For now. Okay, good. I'm thinking about getting her a friend, but I'm not. I have to get like the condo board to sign off on it. Uh, they ruin everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, they won't let me have a dog. So, but you know what we can get today specifically? We mm-hmm. can get ourselves some of the 16 item maladaptive daydreaming scale or the MDS 16. <laughs> like my segui, my segue there. That was beautiful, beautiful, very thank- professional. Thank you, thank you. I try. I'm a lot. That yep. I'm trying real hard here. But what the MDS 16 is? Uh, there are 16 scales. You rate yourself from never to extremely frequent, uh, and you go through it. There's about three pages, and uh, Dimmer should know a little bit more about it than I do for sure. But we're going to be going through this today. I do know a little bit about it. I prepared. Would you like to tell us about it, Dimmer? I would. You know. <laughs> All right. So, oh no! You know what I didn't write down was when it was made. Mm. Wait, when was it made? Do you know? No, but oh. hold on. I have in front the of internet. me the <laughs> internet. Oh, uh, almighty Google, tell us your secrets. When was the MDS 16 made? It was published 2016. 2016. And it was pub- and it was published 2016 by Eli Sommer. Uh, I'm going to butcher the rest of their names. Jane Biggleson, Jonathan Lairfield, and Daniela Jopp. Jopp? Jopp. Jopp. Yep. Sommer, Lairfield, Jopp, and Biggleson. Yes. So we'll be going through this today. Uh, we'll be mentioning it. We'll be mentioning what it says, obviously, because this is an audio podcast. If you haven't gathered yet. <laughs> In case there's any doubt after two seasons. <laughs> uh, so it actually started not with 16 items it, when it started like if it will we'll link the um, de- development of the MDS in the in the um, oh my god what's it called the uh, in the description below the, where you can like and subscribe <laughs> in the description we'll, we'll link it in the description it's not going to say 16 it's going to say 14 because it mm-hmm. started as the as a, a 14 item scale. Yep. Um, and uh, it, it measures it measures different things. Uh, yearning, kinesthesia, which is movement mm-hmm. and impairment. Mm-hmm. Um, and later, because of the frequency of like music being being such a a strong and common trigger. They they added a couple of questions about music, I believe, and that's how it became the MDS mm-hmm. sixteen. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> oh. Oh yes, there's more. There's more. So I'm I'm gonna have to read directly from the paper here, because I just because I think I should. <laughs> yes. Now you're going, you're about to sound like a doctor. Be prepared. Okay, this is from a different paper. It's from one that actually just came out, and it's only by chance that I happened to find this. Mm -hmm. I like I like just read it today, so I haven't I haven't had time to like process it or figure out what it means. But um, Mm -hmm. new paper came out recently: the epidemiological data on a newly identified syndrome near at Safrodudek and Nietz and Theodore Katz um, from Ben Gurion University of the Negev. So they actually, there's a a little piece, a little tiny paragraph in there about the MDS-16, because this is used in like, in like all maladaptive daydreaming papers, or at least all of them that I've seen uh, studies, Mm -hmm. they, they use the, the MDS to weed out their participants, not weed out, but like separate them into like non-MD and MD groups. Mm -hmm. Um, So this one's their paper, this one that just came out says, in terms of non-normality, skewness and kurtosis parameters across samples suggest that items four through 14 and 16 may better differentiate normal from abnormal daydreaming. Conversely, items one through three and 15 seem to tap into a more continuous trait. 
Uh, and I know that's kind of a mouthful. That was and, a uh, lot of words. I'm, yeah, words I there. had to I had to look up skewness and kurtosis, and it's it's basically just um statistics um statistics speak for like how fat the peak is and how symmetrical it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason I'm bringing it up is because like okay, I'm no researcher. I failed stats three times, mm -hmm. passed with a pity D on the fourth try. Yep. <laughs> but what it sounds like to me is that that is saying one through three and 15 don't even need to be on the MDS. Like we can just get rid of those. <laughs> so that's what, that's what we're going to do today. Um, we're just going to, we're going to go through each of the questions and talk about them and score ourselves and, and just see how this comes out. So, I mean, this is one through three and I think they're all like really important to a diagnosis of MD, but we'll see what other, other people think. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Yeah, just luckily they're the first three we're gonna do anyway. Uh, out of curiosity, though, have you guys have you guys taken uh, the MDS sixteen before? I personally have not, uh, and the reason why is I like MD is very personal to me, so I try mm -hmm. not to compare myself to others because I have a lot of tendencies that are not common. I think I saw it once and then realized I ranked high on all of them, and then went into denial and didn't look at it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've taken this thing like a million times, but only because I like join every study that I'm eligible for, mm -hmm. and it's in every study. So mm -hmm. I've I've ended up taking it a bunch. It does have uh does have instructions here at the top, which I'm just going to read out for the viewers. In answering the following questions, please refer to your daydreaming activities in the last month. Okay, so we're only doing like last 30 days oh okay so not like our not like a year or our life or yep mm -hmm. just 30 days at once huh. not, okay. not year not life not previous lives simply 30. yep choose the option that best fits your experience and then they give an example i would like to make a caveat um as mm -hmm. i as i work as an accountant last month was a little atypical for me and not emptying um but yeah i'll i'll, I'll think of the last 30 days mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. I, you know, I mean, we're not, this isn't a study. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. like we, I don't think we need to be like crazy, like, like try, try, yeah, just try to do what's typical for you for this. Okay. Since we're not. Uh, for those, for the viewers out there, uh, we'd like to also make a distinction. The way that the MDS is set up, it's between zero and a hundred percent. And they go 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way from zero to zero to a hundred. Um, but alternatively, you typically go zero which is never to 100 which is extremely frequent and for the sake of conversation we won't really be saying numbers we'll just be mm -hmm. talking about how frequently we uh we rate whether we rate high or low on these scales not exactly using numbers they're a good metric numbers are a good metric but they're not the end all be all for sure absolutely so we'll begin with uh you dimmer since you've done this before number one some people notice that certain music can trigger their daydreaming to what extent does music activate your daydreaming Okay, I know we weren't going to say numbers, but 100%. But... Very, very often. Here we go. Very often. <laughs> very often. Very often. Yeah. Um, it will very often activate my daydreaming. And, like, the way I've dealt with that is I don't listen to music anymore. I quit music years ago. Mm -hmm. I only listen in the car now. Um, mm -hmm. but even if I'm like out, cause there's just ambient music in a lot of the world. If I'm out like grocery shopping and there's, you know, they have just music playing over the speakers, like boop, I'm gone. Yeah, no, I could sympathize. Uh, what about you? Um, so for me, I would say I'm in the middle. Like if it's a music about a particular scene from a movie that like I've seen before, like I'll use the music to kind of reenact that scene and like make a different plot or add like a new character. So yeah, I think music itself doesn't necessarily trigger, but it's more like music and like TV music and movies. Yeah, the uh, the music that triggers me specifically because if I'm out grocery shopping, I tune out the uh, the really generic music. Um, but if there's like a song that I am currently vibing with, usually what it is is if I, I'm having a certain mood of like that day. And mm -hmm. I can, and my brain, I, I don't ask my brain. My brain just kind of does it. My brain says, hey, there's like a scenario you could build with this. We're going to go on an adventure. And <laughs> then suddenly I'm somewhere else. I'm on that adventure. So 
Uh, I'd say pretty often. Not all the time, for sure. But boy, howdy! I'd like if I ever turn on music anywhere, it's that's the end of it, you know. So, and then I come back later, and I'm like, wow, how did I get here? Yeah. <laughs> I do. You manage to give up music, though. I I wouldn't be able to do that. Neither can I. Yeah, it was kind of it was it started as an accident, um, because I met my now husband at my time at the time he was my boyfriend and like I just I I would mostly listen to music while I slept. Mm-hmm. And I, I couldn't like have music blasting through headphones while someone was sleeping next to me. So that's what mm-hmm. started it. And then I realized like, okay, this is getting better and started mm-hmm. cutting it out of other parts. Um so now I just have it in the car. But mm-hmm. even even then like I'll curate cds and stuff that have good daydreaming music on them and uh, mm-hmm. and just listen 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 to the same song over and over and over if i can oh yeah i, I do that too on playlists i always thought it was really weird but like because I, I thought i was like the only one that did it and then one time my friend like caught me because she's like because she went she basically at work like sometimes we like go around each other's desk and she's like i noticed that you were like listening to that same song an hour ago and I was like, uh oh, I've been found out. <laughs> like the playlist just started over. It's nothing. I know, right? <laughs> it's an hour long playlist. It just loops. <laughs> One song. No, I typically take the song by the horns and bring out every bit of good feeling from it until it's got nothing left. Mm hmm. Yeah, very relatable. Yep, all the way into the ground. All right, so that was number one. All right, number two, some people feel a need to continue a daydream that was interrupted by a real-world event at a later point. When a real-world event has interrupted one of your daydreams, how strong was your need or urge to return to the daydream as soon as possible? Not an urge at all, to an extreme urge. Definitely an extreme urge for me. Mm-hmm. I would rate this one a little a little lower. Like It's still on the upper half of the scale, but it's, it's not at extreme. I would say like a couple of years ago. I would have chosen extreme, but I've, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been working on it for a long time and I think I'm, you know, I've made progress. Like I haven't got it down to like a 20%, but Mm you know, I've, I've I've knocked it down a few bars there. Yeah. I, I, my, it's real low for me. It's real low. And the reason why is because, uh, usually I'm, uh, the only times I'm ever pulled out of my daydream is if I have something to do. And let me tell you, when I have something to do, my anxiety really doesn't let me uh, doesn't let me sleep at night for sure. So I so I'll daydream for like an hour or like two hours or whatever, or maybe maybe even less than that. And then I'm suddenly like, hey, didn't I have an assignment or isn't work coming up or whatever? And then I suddenly like bolt upright or like slam my head into like a, a ceiling or whatever because I'm like laying down and, and or something and then i like look at my clock because it's like do, what do i do now do i have something to do and if the answer is no it's like oh whew, well now now i'm awake and the music's off so i'm here now it's usually how it goes for me yeah for me sometimes it's at work like so basically like i'll be like listening to music and like a plot line of my own and then like a coworker will go up to me and be like i need someone to do this now like I can't find anybody, and I'm just like, I just get very annoyed. I'm just like, ah. That's the moment you flip your table, and they say, yeah. why, are you so up- why are you so upset? You're, you're giving me more work again. Yeah. But also, especially when it's the type of thing where, like, I can't really, like, MD while working, because, like, there's, like, other people also on the project with me, so I gotta put that plot line. It's, for me, it's sort of like, imagine if you're, like, watching, like, a really engaging movie, and then, like, it was suddenly, like, just turned off. It's just like, but what happened in that scene? I want to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a good... Uh, I don't even think metaphor is the right word, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Good uh, mm-hmm. parallel. It's the worst like cliffhanger ever, except oh, yeah. you're, you're the cliffhanger. Yeah, and you know what? No matter where you are in the daydream, even if it's like a boring part, it's still a cliffhanger somehow. Mm-hmm. My God, let me, let me tell you. It's, uh, it's strange. I, I could go off on a tangent about how you go to the cliffhanger and then you'd come back and it's something entirely different and then oh my god you're like what happened back then wait what 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 changed because you've gone through the you've gone through the scene again but the scene's different now because you're you've taken it from the top so yeah but yeah i don't yeah. get much of the urge these days when i was younger oh boy but these days not much let's go through number three now actually how often are your current daydreams accompanied by vocal noises or facial expressions, e.g. laughing, talking, or mouthing the words? 
Oh, for me, um, I would say like in the middle. It was a lot worse when I was younger, but I guess I sort of like had to train myself to like not do that. Um, because my my dad actually caught me a few times. He's just like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm playing with my stuffed animals that are also on the bed, and I'm not holding them." But the worst thing is like if you're ever like in a meeting or like in a serious like time with a friend. And then, like, you're sort of MDing at the same time, and you react in a way mm -hmm. through the MD that's, like, not appropriate for the situation at work or at, with mm -hmm. your friend. It's yeah. very awkward. Yeah. Nah. Dimmer? Um, I'd say I'm pretty high on this one. And actually, I would even say it's actually getting worse. But... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's actually getting worse or if because I'm keeping an eye on my daydreaming, I'm just noticing it a lot more than I otherwise mm -hmm. would. Hmm. For, for, for me, it's usually pretty, pretty low, pretty. It's not never, but like happens sometimes. But let me tell you, these past six months, man, I've been getting worse, especially since it's like getting close and semesters closing off. And I, I'm like summer's coming close, but I got so much work to do still, man, I am. I'm slipping. I'm slipping these days. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that. If you're the more tired you are, it's like uh, if you got a mental barrier, right, mm -hmm. on uh, on your facial expressions. But like the more tired you are, and like the more out of sorts you are, like anxious or, or, or you know, exhausted. You have too much work and like too much to do, and not enough time, or you've been cramming or studying or all of that, or uh, in terms of just like work, you're just like cramming on that project, uh, crunch time, and all of that. You are just the less like mental energy you can expend on that filter, the more you just kind of let it go and let it out. At least mm -hmm. that, uh, that's what I think. I mean, that's what it is for me, for sure, man. Is your filter on for either of you? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Okay. But for me, I've become a master at using whatever situation I'm in to like justify my expression. Like, if I'm like laughing at something serious, I'll be like, oh my God, on TV. Like, I totally. Yeah didn't see that coming or like if it's mm -hmm. at at work i'm just like but if i like if someone's like you look so serious i'd be like but will we have to work longer hours like in the summer and and then they're like oh no i don't like I'll, I'll i'll try to find like an explanation mm -hmm. to like justify why my face is doing the wrong thing at the moment mm -hmm. yeah it's mostly my husband who catches me like i don't know what's been going on with me the past few days but like it's mm -hmm. been more than once that like i've walked past him in a daydream or something and he's he like sees the look on my face he's just like what's wrong like like he like i came into the office the other day he's like oh, what's wrong because apparently i came in with a sense of urgency and it was like nothing i just i'm using the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> no my uh that like i can i can sympathize people will look at me funny the difference is in my daily life uh, everybody knows me as the strangest person they've ever met. At least that's what they tell me. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, um, but usually they, uh, because of that, they write it off as, oh, he's just being weird again. And I can literally just say, yeah, I'm just living. And that's all they need to just completely ignore it. And if a normal person, or I guess a, um, if you're your average Joe in the middle of the street, like I'll be in like a, a, a grocery store. Um, and someone just like looks at you funny. It's like ex you, you snap your finger or I snap my fingers and I look at them and I say, yep, exactly. And they get very, very confused. But mm -hmm. I completely ignore the fact that I was doing it before. And for some reason, people just seem to forget as well. Um, I just completely ignore it. And I look strange in public, but I can't really bring myself to care all that much. I see too many people daily. Yeah, I love wearing the mask, actually, because it sort of like disguise my true facial expression. Mm -hmm. And then it was a super easy to hide like emptying if like you were at work or like with a friend like out because you'd just be mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm wearing my mask. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, you can't see me smile or not smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved masks. <laughs> it was pretty great. But now no one wears them anymore. So we kind of yeah. have to take them off. And those cool. those three, those we've just done the first three. Those are the three that don't differentiate MDers from non MDers that great. Which oh, is weird, because okay. I think those three are, like, super core to MD. I know that, like, for immersive daydreaming, um, like, some, like, I've heard from, like, some writers and painters will, like, act out certain scenes. So, like, maybe that's why, like... It's tied to creativity. Um, oftentimes, MD is tied to creative types, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess just, like, artists and painters and things 
uh, do it a little more, um, but maybe not as much as us. Who knows? Who knows? I don't yeah. have numbers. We don't have numbers here. We don't use numbers. No, we we're not use, using any numbers. We, I've never heard a number before in my life. We only hear never or extremely frequently <laughs> or very often or always or never. So those I three. I back of yeah. my store, though. Because <laughs> I'm curious to see if it comes out over the bar or not still. Because I've been working on this for a few years. Yeah, my uh, okay. I thought I'd mention for the audience that was for, those three were for um, the average Joe. Apparently, mm -hmm. as of this point moving forward, you're stepping into the realm of 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 impossibility, strangeness, and MD. Ooh, spooky. Starting with number four. If you go through a period of time when you are not able to daydream as much as usual due to real world obligations, how distressed are you by your inability to find the time to daydream? So for me, like, I can actually do MD through a lot of my, like, work, or even, like, during school. Because a lot of people have, like, like, when I came out to people, my friends, a lot of people were like, how did you do, like, all the stuff that you did? Because they're very confused. Not to, like, brag or anything. But, like, you know, I finished school. Like, I got, like, this job. I got another job. But, like, I guess I'm able to do, like, the work concurrently. So for the most part, it's not really, nothing is really stopping me if I want to. But there are times when, like, I have to, like, give my full attention and I do get annoyed because it's like, it's like that cliffhanger again. Mm -hmm. This is another one I would say has gotten better with time. Like a few years ago, I, I would have been at the top at extreme distress. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, now five years on or so, I don't know. I would say that maybe it's like, I would put this one in the middle. Like I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm a little distressed, probably more than is normal, but, but I'm not like crying or, or anything. I'm just trying to, to get out of there faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I feel more distressed if the plot line is super new also, um, or like if the characters are, are new, but if it's an old plot line, then maybe not as much. Yeah. For me personally, um, when it comes to being annoyed when I'm not allowed to daydream, I have gotten very frustrated in the past, but in terms of uh, doing school and things, it's less of getting annoyed and more of like a, like a, like a, like a weight on my shoulders, which I guess technically counts as distressed, but it's like sometimes I like at some point I just need to sit and not think for a while, which I guess is really like strange and counterintuitive considering that all you're really doing when daydreaming is like imagining and kind of thinking for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, there are times when it's just like, I've stared at this screen for 10 hours today doing nothing but like uh, computer programming and fancy tippy tap click clack work on my keyboard and I need to stop. So I simply go over to my bed or sit around in my chair and listen to music for like many, many hours. Uh, and maybe that's just general fatigue, but in terms of like, if you go a whole week or like two weeks without uh, daydreaming, it's just, I try to do it concurrently um, so that I don't go nuts in my mm -hmm. free time or I don't get like super, super exhausted not being able to do it. Um, but like day to day, daily, I try to get a little bit in here, a little bit in there. Uh, it's like instead of eating three meals a day, you eat a bunch of um, like smaller portions of that meal so that you get, you know, enough food uh, mm -hmm. for the day, but just in smaller portions over the course of the day. Uh, even if it's like five minutes here, six minutes there, um, which brings you in and out, which right, is right. kind of annoying. The only time I think in the past 30 days I've ever gotten really, really annoyed is when I had um, uh, a roommate of mine just start banging on my door banging on my door super loud um as i was like and because it like loud noises not my thing let me tell you sensory mm -hmm. overload sucks um yeah same here it's pretty bad uh so when he started banging on the door that was the double whammy it's like okay you're making a loud noise so it hurts and you're kicking me out of my daydream and i'm thinking to myself oh my god i'm going to have to take like 30 seconds or else i'm going to open that door and i'm going mm -hmm. to look this man in the eye and be really really upset at him but it doesn't mm -hmm. come by often and it doesn't usually come by that bad for sure at least not for yeah. me for me it's like it's not it's also the noise but it's also the startle factor of like 
something very like unexpected just like started like yelling like one time there was like a bat in our office and then like these girls started screaming and i'm just like i cannot i cannot do this so well hold on uh there was a there was a bat in your office like a, like yeah, a, like like a um, floaty float bat upside down bat boy like yes, vampire bat like boy a floaty float oh. bat. we we li- we work in a very old building um so it's not ah. like uncommon yeah no i can sympathize with stuff like that like it's a lot and if anyone out you uh, out there in the audience can sympathize well you're not alone because holy cow is it frustrating <laughs> loud noise hurts um so yeah no it's not actually that bad for me in short Let's see. We're moving onwards uh, to number five. Uh, there's, for the record, uh, for those of you who want to take the MDS, there are three pages of this document, and those four are the uh, the first page. Uh, and now we're moving on so to the second. If any of you are following along, you've managed to find it, uh, grab it, and uh, you want to go through it yourself. Uh, we're on page number two. We're at number five. Some people have the experience of their daydreams interfering with their daily chores or tasks. How much does your daydreaming interfere with your ability to get basic chores accomplished? I think for me it's like a lot because usually it's like I just keep procrastinating. Like I'll put off washing the dishes. Even right now, like I haven't washed the dishes. and kind of gross. Like it's been like several days. But sometimes I try to like if I'm going to daydream, I like make myself at least do a chore like in the middle. So it's like so- semi-productive. But I definitely will, like, just put things off, put things off, put things off, because, like, I'd rather just empty. Oh, yeah. I will lay in bed for hours, even when I have, like, a thousand things I need to actually attend to. Mm -hmm. I do, I am able to, like, keep up the, the bare minimum. But I don't know. Some of that is because I, like, weirdly have done so much to, like, tailor my life around ease and... I mean, which is probably a good thing. Like, like I, I got rid of all my dishes. We only have enough dishes for my family and like an extra person. So that, you know, I never have an overwhelming amount to wash because I just don't have that many. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and like I've, 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 you know, built some of that kind of stuff into my life just so I, I don't have to worry as much, I guess, so that I, I can free up time to daydream but even then it's not really daydreaming it's not really free time um you know i still have a thousand things to do i can i can keep a bare minimum of cleanliness like we're not living in filth mm-hmm. um, you, you know um you know my son has clean clothes but yeah i mean that's that's what i feel like it is i feel like it's it's a minimum and i have to put a lot of work in to get even that much done so I would yes. I would rate this one pretty high. Personally, uh, I've been told that I'm a very driven individual. I don't know what that means, and I was only told that in like the past two months. I have never considered myself driven at all. Um, and and I like Dimmer, you were saying it feels like just doing anything is so hard, and doing any chores are so unbelievably difficult. But the way I often trick myself into doing things is uh. But I say, if I don't do this, I will be punished later for it. That's what I've oriented my life around. And uh, one Mm -hmm. of the tricks that I use to uh, get through basic chores, specifically, things like school require so much more effort to do Mm -hmm. literally one assignment. Let me tell you, I've had one sitting around for days that I just need to finish before the time limits up. Uh, The deadline, I think it's called, Um, is I try to do things concurrently, is I put on music actively, mind you. I actively put on music that'll put me into a daydream. And then mm-hmm. I daydream while I'm doing my chores, and I set my body to autopilot. Um, mm-hmm. And then if if my body or like brain recognizes something's wrong, I take note of it. Uh, and then if I have to maybe rewash a dish, because believe me, we have so many dishes. So it's like it's it's a lot taking out the trash, doing laundry, and things like that. The problem for me comes from remembering everything, and like mm-hmm. b- believe me. A planner does not help. <laughs> yeah. I have tried several. I have one from literally every single year from the past half decade, and all of them are all, almost completely empty. Um, but doing them the way I, I've, in short, the way I end up trying to get through all of my stuff is by daydreaming and teaching my body to autopilot through it. And then suddenly, maybe like 20, 30 minutes later, uh, your chores are done. Uh, and it feels like no time has passed at all. That's the way I have done it. Um, hmm. Maybe it won't exactly work for most people, but it 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 certainly helped for me. So that was number five. 
Number six is some people feel distressed or concerned about the amount of time they spend daydreaming. How distressed do you currently feel about the amount of time you spend daydreaming? I mean, I guess like, yeah, probably like big distress. I mean, it's not great. Like, it's not a great habit to have. But um, I do think like it's a coping mechanism that I can eventually overcome and like stop doing. But I do like worry about how much time like I've wasted and like stuff that could be spent doing other things more productive. I um okay, so like I said, I've been working on this for a while and I feel like I am at a point where I most days am okay with this with the amount of time because because I've I've improved my sleeping habits, you know, so I'm not staying up all night anymore. And even though it's a couple hours, it's just, you know, a couple hours in bed and I'm still getting a decent amount of sleep. Um, you know, I daydream in the car when, you know, what the hell else are you going to do in the car? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and, you know, so most, most of the time I'm, I am okay. It sort of runs in the background still and it, it slips out during the day. Um, but for the most part, it's fine a lot of days but there is a not insignificant amount of days where i will still just have a bad one and spend six hours in bed and that's still happening um that went away for a while but it's been coming back again and recently i've been having a lot more of those bad days than i was having so those those are the days that concern me and they are not terribly far between you know like maybe I, I go like a week totally fine everything under control but then i'll hit like three days where i'm like not even getting out of bed right, right. Mm -hmm. so so those are still concerning but it's on and off on and off so overall i think i'd i'd rate myself you know above the halfway mark but i, mm -hmm. I don't want to go to like the hard extreme right Something I like struggle with too is like I I go I keep waffling back and forth whether I should quit MD altogether or should I just work to get MD in a place that's not super intrusive on like my real life and I just like it's like quit cold turkey or like try to manage it quit cold turkey like which is better and I I don't know I I, I struggle with that old turkey is hard uh, at least from what I've heard is it can be done. Um, and at the very least, it's worth a shot for those of you out there who want, who are trying to sort of find different methods of lowering the amount you're daydreaming a day. Uh, you can certainly try. Um, and some people succeed with it, but it's not easy. It's not an easy mm -hmm. thing to do for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a, a lot of times I hear that just being able to live with it in whichever way you can um, seems to suit a, a, a lot of people far more. Um, but that does it doesn't suit everybody for sure. Some people get really frustrated with how much they're daydreaming, no matter how much it is, um, which is understandable. Yeah, but. like I, I think for, for me, like the second one of being able to like manage it in my day to day life um, is probably more like doable. Like it's a more reachable goal. Mm -hmm. But the, yeah, I just the problem with quitting cold turkey is a similar reason you uh, or similar problem you end up having when you're trying to quit cold turkey for like cigarettes or like alcohol mm -hmm. or something like that um where quitting cold turkey usually is such a, a like a weight on your like on your psyche on your body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you usually just come back to it but worse than before um it's yeah. certainly worth a shot i've done it um i had success um for a bit with it um it's just uh not it's not for everybody hmm yeah, for me, the only way I could probably quit cold turkey would to be because actually Jane Bigelson recommended this drug in her trials. I don't know if we're like allowed to mention like the name of psych meds, but she did talk about fluvoxamine as like being helpful for her. And I actually took that. The only downside is there are some pretty serious side effects um, mm -hmm. in terms of like your like your, it's hard to breathe because like your sinuses are very clogged and mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to like. Yeah, like you just you feel like it's it's very difficult to to breathe like normally um mm -hmm. but Med yeah I, I don't know like it's yeah meds can help but uh i try i personally try to stay away from medication that i know is not absolutely necessary for me mm -hmm. um not because i hate medication or 
something or other. There's people will get on to me for a bunch of different reasons, but I've been taking medication most of my life, uh, mm-hmm. in both in the morning and at night, every single mm-hmm. day. And let me tell you, I'm so tired of it. <laughs> I will be doing it for the rest of my life. I don't need to be taking any more medication than I already do. And it's not exactly a huge amount, but it's still like you look at it in the morning and you go to the bathroom and you're like, man, you know, here's another yeah. one down the, down the hatch, right? So um, I try to keep it, like I try to find... Uh, ways to like healthy ways to not uh, to um, sort of limit it without Mm -hmm. immediately defaulting to uh, medication and especially in some cases medication can be expensive so if you don't have the capital to uh, to expend on it if you don't have Mm -hmm. the money to spend on it I wouldn't recommend it not immediately anyways for Mm -hmm. sure Um, me personally the way that I've dealt with it um, is uh, I, I, and here's the way I trick myself. I tell myself this all the time and I tell, I think I've told, I finally told to myself long enough for me to finally believe it. Um, but I will rot if I am in my room. I cannot stay in my room. I have to be, I have to go out and be doing things, doing something seems to be, uh, a, a way that a, like a, a fair few people try to keep themselves out of daydreaming is just keeping yourself active in one way or another. Now, like I said, it, it's a lot. And it's a it's a hefty burden for sure. And when once it gets to be too much, sometimes you spread yourself too thin if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you don't, when you don't, um, you can kind of uh, be you can kind of be uh, productive. Is the word I'm thinking of. Sometimes you can be productive for sure. That's the way I do it. I keep myself so busy, so busy. Yeah, no, I, I need to do that more. I just. I guess like all the procrastination thing, I just keep putting it off. But I, I, I am very pro medication myself. Like I'm, I'm on Wellbutrin now, and it's been very, very helpful. Like I've actually noticed. Oh, Wellbutrin is great. In my life. Yeah, it's. Oh, I, I, I probably couldn't function function well without it. <laughs> yeah, I do want to mention. Uh, I think we would be remiss not to that. Um, there are currently no medications recommended for maladaptive daydreaming. They haven't done any, you know, like um, studies that really get to that. They did one study. Um, it was all self-report. It didn't really find much. Mm-hmm. Maybe SSRR, our SSRIs might be your best bet, but it like, it's really, it's not like a strong thing, not mm-hmm. strong enough for them to recommend it. Therapy is what's recommended for maladaptive daydreaming. If mm-hmm. you have a comorbid disorder though, mm-hmm. um, you will want to treat that and it might help the maladaptive daydreaming. But like Hillary and Q said, talk to your doctor because it could also make the daydreaming worse um, and y- you want the doctor to know that that's a symptom you're concerned about and a lot of times uh people won't mention this but like medicating is uh, an iterative process let me see if i can pronounce that correctly it is an iterative process meaning that the first time around you might not get it right second time around you might not get it right so you just got to keep trying stuff if you are going to take medicate like the medication route awesome all right number seven uh, when you know you've had something important or challenging to pay attention to or finish, how difficult was it for you to stay on task and complete the goal without daydreaming? Uh, me? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> I have always, if it's a, I always daydream at some point or another, man. It is, it's very difficult for me to do it without daydreaming. Um, and I got to, like for assignments at school, I really got to work for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the last time I had something really challenging that I needed to pay attention to. <laughs> like it, I I haven't had anything. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like I've had anything really challenging in my in my life recently. Certainly not in the last thirty days. Mm-hmm. Um. Ooh, geez. Yeah, this is a hard one to answer. I yeah. I don't put myself in challenging situations. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like um like challenging, it's like some people might find like um like basic tasks challenging, like like chores and things like that. It can be really challenging for some people. So maybe choose maybe we can choose that for me. Uh, I say everything is challenging. That's the way that I think of it. Because oh my god, getting up and going to bed is a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I think um usually if I do, I probably will be emptying during the process, and I'll just do whatever I'm doing a little like badly and make silly mistakes that probably I should not have made. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess, like, the consequences, like, you know, show up on my, like, report card when I was younger, or show up in my performance re- reviews right now, but it's definitely something that, like, I don't always give 110% focus to what I'm on right now, and it, like, mm-hmm. it does, like, affect my performance quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But it's better to do it than to not, right? 
So like even right, with the performance things, hit, yeah. right? I have been thinking about this more and I actually think I'm going to score really low on this one and not because I wouldn't daydream through something important, but because I have this procrastination problem, I guess, where I will put something off and I'll put something off and I'll put something off until there is absolutely no choice left but to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did this through university a lot. <laughs> I was like the queen of uh, writing a research paper overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't daydream through it because I had put it off so long because the pressure was so high that I just, I just couldn't. Yeah. You know, it, it was a blitz. It was, you know, a, an, a, a speed run through whatever I had to do. There was, there was no daydreaming, but um, that's only because of the terrible position I had put myself in. Anxiety is a powerful motivator for, for many, <laughs> for me, for me as well, for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I definitely stayed on task, um, just not in the probably best way. <laughs> yep. Got it done though, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put that one real low. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Um, what about number eight? If you guys don't have anything else to say about number seven, which is some people have the experience of their daydreaming hindering the things that are most important to them. How much do you feel that your daydreaming activities interfere with achieving your overall life goals? Super high. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I'm just. I'm just not the person. I want to be. I'm not the person I set out to be. Um, I, you know, the most important thing to me right now is my son. Um, and yeah, I like MD gets in the way of that sometimes. Like it's mm -hmm. yeah. I, I okay. I score not not like there's there's not no interference. Let believe me. Let me preface this. There is an absolute boatload of interference with achieving my life's goals but i have taken the road uh, i've taken i've decided to use the strategy um that has suited me best throughout my life which is uh being incredibly stubborn and spiteful about my goals um when growing up i didn't really have anyone to rely on for achieving my goals in fact i think when i was really 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 young i didn't really have any goals at all um and i have a couple now but I couldn't ever rely on anybody else, so I was uh, a lot of what motivates me these days is a, a stubborn sense of of spitefulness to show everybody who told me I wouldn't be anything you're wrong, and I am going to keep moving towards you know whatever goal it is slowly and believe me it is snail's pace. Um, but I'm I'm literally the tortoise in the hare. I am the tortoise right now, man. I one foot in front of the other just like a sense of duty at this point for sure um so is there interference there's a ton uh but i can't i can't get myself to stop at this point i refuse to get off my my uh my my horse i guess not like a high horse but you know i'm gonna get there i've already gotten to one or two of the goals that i got and just doing that alone shows me i can do it so that's why i keep working at it yeah for me like there's a lot of stuff i would like to get done like get farther in my career um like have a partner or have a family but i do think the md just uh, gets in the way like a lot of like meeting those goals now like mm -hmm. i don't know it's just kind of depressing to think about i guess like mm -hmm. but i do think that like if i channel my md into something like more more useful like i could be very like successful at it but mm -hmm. yeah i guess the, the the issue is like getting past like that like first period of suck where like you first start something and you're just like not good and you just mm -hmm. have to kind of go through it to like get to a more competent level. Mm -hmm. Just any goal at all is a lot. Like even setting a goal is a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And it's hard because a lot of the time you set it super duper high. Like you don't have to feel bad about setting your goal, getting out of to, to be getting out of bed because like, man, you know, just doing anything is, is an improvement for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. That was number eight. Halfway uh, there. Halfway there. Halfway there. <laughs> and an hour in. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Parallel Lives. Join us next time. <laughs> Thank you, Hillary, for coming on by. Thanks, guys. 
<laughs> you always have to thank the guests. I never thank the guests. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Hillary. Um, yet yeah, you can you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, um, Pocket Cast, Google, Apple, wherever. We're all over the place. Anchor, of course. Um, leave comments yes like subscribe uh do all that stuff <laughs> and uh you can join the discord as well we are going to have links to uh the discord and the papers that we talked about and the maladaptive daydreaming scale which is available by the way in like 40 languages if we break this into two episodes i'm just going to put the same outro so you might be hearing this outro for the second time but maybe not <laughs> we'll see how it goes oh yeah all right y'all take care in the audience all right see ya see you guys bye